So last time we began a problem, and I'm going to finish it. We were analyzing a basically a jet engine, a gas turbine for propulsion. In it, we had our major components, the diffuser. We had the, uh, the compressor, the combustor, the turbine, the nozzle. We actually put it out on a temperature entropy diagram. And in it, we really were paying careful attention to the pressures. And so this line here is the pressure of A is equal to the pressure of B. The exit and the inlet pressures are actually the same pressures. Then we also had the pressure after the diffuser. It's slightly higher than pressure A. Then we had the highest pressure. Pressure 2 is equal to pressure 3, which is the combustor pressure. And then we dropped to 4. And we said that a lot of students don't quite know where to put 4. It's a challenge. What is the pressure at 4? And I'm going to try and clear that up today because it's not all the way down to 1. It's not the same pressure as 1. Uh, okay. And in this TS diagram, I'm going to come back to it again. Uh, we want to solve uh, for the properties. As we were marching through, we were making a table of different states, note, writing the pressure, the temperature, the speed, and the kinetic energy. The speed and the kinetic energy are only for the inlet state A and the exit state B. The rest of the table, they'll just be zeros because we neglect them. And uh, I left last time with the statement that we are about ready to go from the inlet to the turbine to the exit to state four. And this is where it gets a little dicey. So let me kind of say there's four things I'd like to calculate. I'd like to calculate the pressure at four if it was isentropic expansion, the pressure at four actual expansion, the temperature of four isentropic expansion, or the temperature of four actual expansion. Now, two of these are this exactly the same. Hey, these are the same. It's just the pressure at four. But in the sequence of things, which one do I calculate first of these three entities? All right? And it, the, the key is right here. What did we say about what the turbine produces? It needs to be exactly the amount of work that the compressor consumes. So what we do is, if you allow me, take this equation back over here. And so what the turbine needs to, to produce balances what the compressor needs to consume. Is that what the turbine produces if it would have been isentropic? No, it's actual. And does it match what the compressor would consume if it was isentropic? No, it's actual. It, it's the actual work transfers. So you say, what is the equation to calculate the actual work out of that turbine? Wouldn't it be enthalpy at state 3 minus the enthalpy at 4 actual? Isn't that good? How about for the compressor? Isn't that enthalpy 2 minus enthalpy 1 and it's 2 actual? And now we have constant specific heats. Isn't that C sub P T3 minus T4 actual equal to C sub P T2 actual minus T1? We can cancel the C sub P's. And there's only one unknown in that equation. We know the inlet and the exit temperature, having worked that far in the problem across the compressor. And we know the inlet temperature to the turbine. This is the only unknown. And it seems weird, doesn't it? T4 actual is equal to temperature uh, at 3 minus the T2 actual minus T1. Um, yeah, that's right. I don't think I have an algebraic error in that equation. Do you agree with that equation, or did I mess up a sign? So now we jump back over to the table. And we say, of these four, it's not like we first go from 3 to 4s as if we do isentropic. Then we use the efficiency to actually get the actual state. No. It's like we jump to this first. We calculate T4 actual. Hey, we didn't even use the isentropic efficiency of the turbine yet. That's why it's tricky. 
That's why it takes students a few times, like, what is exactly going on here? All right, so let's fill in the number. So we, we will come out that this temperature, T4 actual, is 463.4 um, Kelvin. Now, if it's 300, I'm sorry, did I say 364? 463.4. Did I say it correctly now? <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Some days I'm challenged <laughs> just to speak correctly. So now, can I calculate T4 as if it had been isentropic? Yeah. So this is actually the second thing we're going to calculate. This was the first thing that we calculate. And then what's the last thing we're going to calculate? the pressures. It's kind of really backwards, but I hope you understand why. Okay? Yes, sir? Could you not use isentropic, uh, isentropic temperatures and run it the other way? Well, and then find your actual using efficiency? Do you have to go backwards on that? Well, what they're giving us is 85 isentropic efficiency. So right. we know what it actually had to produce. Now we're going to go back and get the isentropic temperature so that we can get the isentropic pressure to actually find the pressure that it goes to. Right, when you equate the two works, could you just say that those are both the works uh, developed as if they were isentropic? You can't do it that way? No. Why not? Because they have different efficiencies. The turbine and the compressor may be 90% and 85% efficient. I think for this problem that the efficiencies are the different, right? Yeah, they're different. I think it would work out if they were both the same isentropic efficiency, but but I would have to double check myself because I never uh, tried it. But I think they would work out if they had the same. But let's now um, do this. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and recycle some space here, okay? Let me recycle this space so I can solve this problem here. So we clean that up. Now... <clears throat> How do I calculate the temperature for isentropic? Well, go back to the basic definition of the turbine isentropic efficiency. It was a difference in enthalpy uh, uh, for the, the work that the, would be out of the turbine if it was um, isentropic expansion, which would give you the maximum. So that would be like work, turbine, isentropic, work, turbine, actual, which would be uh, enthalpy, uh, 4 actual minus enthalpy 3, enthalpy 4 isentropic, enthalpy 3, constant specific heats. We have the temperature 4 actual minus temperature 3 divided by the temperature 4 isentropic minus temperature 3. Hence, the temperature 4 isentropic is, if I can do the algebra in one step, T3 minus 1 over the isentropic efficiency. Did I do that right? Of... T4 actual minus T3. <clears throat> I think that's right, no? Oh, yeah, I, I probably, you're right. This I, I wrote is negative and negative. <laughs> it cancels out. Yeah. So, um, is this double, double, like T3 minus T4? I think I got a sign error. T3 is higher, isn't it? It should be T3 minus T4 actual. Oh, man, why don't I just look at my notes and get it right? <laughs> T4 isotropic, T3 minus 1 over this. This is now correct. Whew. All right. Hmm. Now, all right, you figure it out. That's what faculty like to do, make mistakes and then quickly erase. <laughs> 
But uh, this equation is correct. So when we calculate T4 isentropic, it comes in at 421.7. It's lower. We would have been able to get a lot more work out, but so too bad because of the isentropic efficiencies, 85% uh, for the turbine. All right. Now, how do I find the four pressure, which is the same? Well, it's based on the isentropic uh, compression or the expansion. So we find that uh, the pressure at four isentropic is lower than the pressure at three, but the ratio of the two is the temperature four isentropic over the temperature three raised to the power K over K minus one. A familiar equation that we used across the compressor. So we calculate the pressure. The last thing we calculate, that pressure comes in at 46.1, and so it's the same pressure, 46.1. So it's kind of first, second, last. That's the sequence of calculations. <clears throat> now we're going to expand down to 26, and now I want to find what is the kinetic energy. I need, I'm going to recycle this space too, okay? Get rid of all this. And uh, so what is the temperature and what is the kinetic energy at the exit of that nozzle? Well, the temperature at B is equal to the temperature at 4 actual, because that's where we're expanding from, times the pressure at B divided by the pressure 4 actual to the K minus 1 over K. Isentropic, ideal gas, true. So we're able to calculate the temperature at, uh, at the exit. It's 394.7. It's cooler because it went through that nozzle. Where did the energy go? It went from enthalpy into kinetic energy. So we do the first law. Maybe I could put it right here. First law for the nozzle. We have the inlet enthalpy at 4 equal to the exit enthalpy at B plus the kinetic energy at B. So the kinetic energy at B is equal to H4 minus HB, which is C sub P T4 minus T um, B, 4 actual, 4 actual, 4 actual. And so we calculate that the kinetic energy is a whopping 70.41. When it came in at 20 kilojoules per kilogram, that was the kinetic energy, it's now 70.41 on the exit. Well, what is the speed of that? The speed, the kinetic energy at the exit is equal to one-half the velocity at the exit squared, true or false? But be careful because these units right here are in kilojoules per kilogram. And this one, V, I want it in meters per second. So I want the speed in meters per second. It turns out that this is 375 meters per second. So it came in at 200, went out at 375 meters per second. So that's the answer for part A. It's the velocity at the nozzle exit. I strongly encourage everybody to take this kinetic energy, 70.41, multiply by 2,000 because of the unit conversion, 1,000 meters squared per second squared is one kilojoule per kilogram, and then take the square root, and that's the velocity. Right? No errors like that on the exam. Good, thank you. So now we can calculate the thrust the forward thrust will be the mass flow rate, which was a given 18 kilograms per second, times the change in the speed, VB minus VA. And I'm out of room again, so the forward thrust comes in at 3,154 newtons. Hopefully that helped.
Clear? Here are all the numbers. Here are all the numbers in an Excel sheet. Here is the answer for part B. Here is the answer for part A. Here is that kinetic energy. Here is that kinetic energy. Here are all the pressures and temperatures. Remember the hard part. This one is kind of like do that first, do this second, then do this third, and I think you'll be able to understand the analysis of the turbine. All right, a um, couple other things that I included in here is uh, I put in the speed of sound. The speed of sound for air at those conditions on the inlet state is 297 meters per second. So then I calculated the Mach number, and it's coming in around 0.67 Mach, the inlet to the jet engine. Remember, I, I, I mentioned that I picked this pressure and temperature as if it's flying at about, what, uh, 32,000 feet, somewhere like that. And then it's going out at those conditions for the air that's exiting, temperature and pressure and all that. It's a speed of sound is almost 400 meters per second, and it's exiting at uh, 0.94 Mach. So that is a good lead-in to our next topic that I need to cover.